You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast, and this is show number 3112 for Sunday the 26th of April 2020. Where dreams begin. Well hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls, and I am joined with the delectable, the darbalicious Jane. Hello there my lovely. Hello darling. Are you well? I am, I am well at the moment, I've been enjoying the sunshine, so I'm, I'm getting quite a nice tan at the moment. I know. It's unusual for me. It's great, isn't it? All those pasty white Brits are going to be going round going to the doctors now because we've got strange warts and moles. No, I'm just making sure my vitamin D is topped up. That's what I'm doing. Perfect. Well, we have a very special returning guest to the Disney Dream Girls. Hello and welcome to the delightful, the jammy dodger obsessed, Len Tester. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Hey, Jane. How are you? Good. We really do need to send you some tr- some decent English biscuits over to help you in this time of social distancing and isolation, my lovely. We really do. I actually had a friend uh, who lives in London uh, do that for me last month. Oh. And I didn't know that they have Jimmy Dodgers with cream now. I That was, uh, that was a revelation to me. Oh, that's going to start a debate, isn't it? Because they're not Jimmy Dodgers, are they, Shell? No. They still got cream in. It's just got to have jam. But there's, there's still jam. There still counts. I do like those ones better, actually, but, you know. And to be honest, I prefer Oreos, but I can't really get Oreos <laughs> in the UK. And I've got a friend who keeps posting pictures of every different flavour of Oreo. And I keep texting him saying, oh, tell me what do they taste like? Just like normal Oreos. So it's like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're missing the point here. You're missing the point. It's something different and it's something I can't get because to get them in the UK costs like $15 a pack or if someone posts them over, I literally get a box of crumbs. <laughs> really? Oh, they don't uh, They don't survive? Not very well after uh, baggage handling have thrown them around a little bit. Mm. But we haven't come and brought you on the show to talk about Nabisco, the amazing biscuit company that makes your cookies. Oh no, we have brought you on to talk some Disney. And firstly, before we begin, it's a bit of a strange world of Disney at the moment, isn't it, Len? We can't go to a theme park. I keep telling people the first thing I'm going to do when when all of the restrictions are lifted is ride Space Mountain and touch my face. (laughs) Which Space Mountain would that be, though? We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Ooh, I, I feel a bit <laughs> of a Space Mountain off coming on here. Well, we have been doing this amazing series where we've had some fantastic guests come and create their own Disney theme park of past, present and future, but not yet built attractions from the whole Disney catalogue of theme parks from all over the world. And we've had some very interesting presentations made to us and basically jane we're just going to sit back and and let len take yeah. over it's, it's a great show for us because we just need to sit back relax <laughs> and enjoy well that's my is... that's my intention anyway yeah so len it's over to you uh all right great so i i uh, i keep up with my list of of 10 and it's uh it's around the world and i i tried to go with uh classic attractions new attractions there wasn't a rule against extinct attractions was there you can do whatever you like. We even had James try and squeeze in three different versions of the Haunted Mansion to create a land called Phantom Manor Haunted Mansion Land. And we let him go <laughs> with it. I didn't think of that. I didn't know we could do a hybrids. All right. So I'll go with, uh, I'll start with, because if we did, I could have, I could have come up with stuff. All right. So my first one is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, from Shanghai. Uh, so battle up for the second treasure. Why that one? Um, it's the most detailed and most advanced of the uh, of the non Disneyland versions of Pirates of the Caribbean. The thing it, it really came down to two to two choices here. It came down to either um, Shanghai or Disneyland. Disneyland obviously is the original. Mm-hmm. It's the best version in the United States. The longest version. The story is coherent, um, and it makes sense. The the thing with Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for the Second Treasure in Shanghai, though, if you've seen the videos online, it's fantastically detailed. It's very, very colorful. Um, and I think it's I, – I give it the edge because it's – because of the effects. Mm-hmm. It's got more modern effects, uh, more modern ride vehicles. I think it's um, – so I think it's 
just slightly better than Disneyland. Uh, and I say that as someone whose first memory of a Disney theme park is Walt Disney World's version of Pirates of the Caribbean. It's literally the first thing I remember seeing in a Disney park. Uh, it's the Walt Disney World version I know is not as good as the Disneyland version. It's still in my top three um, Walt Disney World attractions. So Pirates of the Caribbean. That's a, a pretty classic attraction that most people love and adore. Uh, and I, th- my third choice for that would have been Disneyland Paris' version, which I really like, especially the queue. I think it's very immersive. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. Um, so that's attraction number uh, one. Attraction number two is Walt Disney World's version of Splash Mountain, which is the better version than Disneyland's. Oh, of course it is. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's bigger, it's longer, it's better in every way. Uh, it makes sense where it is in Frontierland. Uh, chronologically, the theming is good. It's right next to Big Thunder as well. So, uh, again, in the overall context of the land, it makes sense. Uh, the other thing I like about Splash is even if the line is an hour long, the fact that the ride takes anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes, depending on how fast they're running the water, means you you, you get a decent bang for your buck, right? You're You're on the ride for a long time. You get a little bit wet so you can cool off. It's family friendly in a way that like Splash Mountain, or sorry, that Space Mountain isn't. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a it's a really good thrill ride. What about the people that are calling for it to be either rethemed or changed in some way because it's based on Song of the South and that is a film that's no longer readily available, although I do have a copy of it. And it's something that isn't as relevant today because people who ride it, very few people will have actually seen the film. I don't think that we need to tie every attraction to a particular set of intellectual property. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm absolutely fine with that. I, I think, you know, I, I don't think I saw Song of the South until the 2000s. I mean, I knew what it was, obviously, and I'd seen clips of it, but I don't think I actually watched the entire movie till, you know, like in the last 10 years. And so for me, the love of the attraction was never tied to the movie and I think for the vast majority of people who go to theme parks they have no idea that the the movie exists it's an awesome movie but we are culturally from a different sounding place to yourself so obviously we were able to watch it right up to the 90s or something Jane because I know I've got it on VHS yeah and I I have got a copy of it as as well on a digital downloady type malarkey so I mean it it's, I think it is one of those films that I remember seeing an awful lot of the clips of, you know, growing up sort of thing, Michelle, probably in the 70s and 80s on tea time specials and that type of thing. It was kind of, you would see certain animation clips of it over here. Um, I don't think I ever saw it, a bit like you, Leonard, I don't think I ever saw it in a full version before that. I think I've only really seen it in the full version much later on probably... In the last ten years or so, I would I would think. Did, so you you did you see the film before you saw the ride, or right before the film? Right before the film, right. I knew the characters because because I would have seen all those snippets over the years. When I mean, we used to have a, fil- a TV show, it was always on on like Easter weekends and bank holiday weekends. It was called it was called the Wonderful World of Disney, and I remember seeing lots of the animation clips on that. So I I knew the characters and knew what knew the origins of it but i'd not seen the movie before going on and bear in mind i was on i went on splash mountain disney world the year it was um originated there 90 whatever it was yeah oh fantastic yeah so i think for most of us who love splash mountain we don't associate it with the movie in any meaningful way mm. yeah, so i think it's it's fine and I'm just going to throw something out when Disney open back up again. I hope you're listening, Disney. I would like to see a log flume Sunday originating in the park, please, <laughs> because you've done it with every other attraction that they've got something themed around food or a mini or something. I want a log flume ice cream. Thank you. <laughs> That's a good idea. See? Like the, 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 the log flume itself could be like chocolate and cinnamon or something, chocolate and graham cracker. Yeah, that's totally doable. See, I come up, why, Disney, you need to employ me because I'll be making you thousands with all of these lovely <laughs> themed food items I come up with. <laughs> Sorry, Len, let's okay, go back to your list. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Uh, so my third uh, attraction is Mr. Toad's Wild Ride from Disneyland. One of the classic yeah. Disneyland, Fantasyland attractions, dark ride. Relatively simple as far as um, rides go. 
the thing that makes Mr. Toad unique, as you all know, is it's one of the very few theme park attractions where you end up in hell after you die. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it gets in on that alone. Plus, you get to drive a crazy car. <laughs> yeah. I think Mr. Toad is, uh, is where it's at. I think that's a pretty good choice. I did enjoy watching the film. The film is not one of my favourites, but I did, I did it for research. I did watch it. <laughs> and it is a very, very cute attraction. Never managed to go on the Walt Disney World version, though. That's okay. It's uh, they, they were they were remarkably the same. I did go on both, um, and now that it's the fact that it's in Disneyland still uh, means that uh, made it okay for us to lose Mr. Toad in in Walt Disney World as long as one version of the ride exists somewhere. I hmm. think I'm okay with that. Perfect. Let's move on. So my fourth version, and this one was uh, this one was a little bit tough. My sentimental favorite version of this ride is in Walt Disney World, but I have to admit Disneyland Paris is is better, uh, and that's Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. <laughs> You're not going to have an argument from us on that one. No, definitely not. Yeah, love fantastic. DLP's version. Yeah, it's fantastic. You get to go under the water. Um, it's just as detailed as um, as Walt Disney World's version. It's, I think, you could argue it's the centerpiece of, of Disneyland Paris. It's the most popular attraction. Um, you know, great ride, great scenery, fantastic music. Uh, the fact that you you have a few additional special effects in Disneyland Paris makes it the best version. Of that attraction, I would say it'd probably be the first thing that you would need to run to in the morning. They still they still have Fast Pass for that, right? Yeah. They do. Yeah. And it has a, a ride photo, which is unique as well. I haven't seen the ride photo. What is it? As you're coming off, there's a little booth where you can view them and then buy it from around the corner. And the thing about Disneyland Paris, and they do this on their pirates as well, is that they enlarge you so you don't get everybody else on the ride vehicle you can just have you too oh nice and so you can't really tell where you are but yeah it's, it's a cute little photo oh that's uh that's that's different that's good yeah but but i think uh, i think big thunder is uh combines everything that disney does well it's it's not a crazy thrill ride like you know some of the rides that you get say at thorpe or uh alton towers nothing like that mm-hmm. um it's got great theming great music lots of detail and it's it was actually the first roller coaster my daughter went on the first true roller coaster my daughter went on so i think it's good for uh for kids who are looking to step up from say the barnstormer or simpler rides like that no a great brilliant mm. choice excellent themed queue there's so many artifacts connected to mining it's just outstanding it is all right, so my uh, my next ride, uh, we're going to go to Epcot for the next two, is Spaceship Earth. Did, does everyone pick Spaceship Earth? No, you're the only one who has. No. How? <sighs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so it, uh, I, I think it's the, the best representation of the original vir- uh, vision for the Epcot theme park mm. because it, it takes something that's relatively dry, you know, the history of communication, uh, and it turns it into what was at one time you know, the most popular attraction in all of Walt Disney World. So until Soren, I think, uh, came around, Station Earth was the most popular attraction in terms of people in uh, in all of Walt Disney World. So that proves that people really, really like it. And even today, it's it still draws a number of people. the The ride itself, the the show building, is iconic. It's, it's literally the icon for Epcot. They've updated it in a way that still makes it relevant. It's got a great soundtrack. It's got uh, um, a host of uh, really good narrators on it, and uh, and they continue to plus it. I mean, I think the next version is not going to be great, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> but I think uh, you know, Spaceship Earth is sort of classic '80s Epcot. Could I pitch somebody to be the new narrator? Because I, I love Dame Judi Dench. Don't get me wrong, but I've I've got this thing for Morgan Freeman's accent. Could he be the next narrator? Sure. You want God to narrate Spaceship Earth? Sure. Yeah. I'm done with that. <laughs> Because then, because then he could actually explain what he wanted when he was creating the Earth. I think we just get get the information directly from the source. From the source, <laughs> I, think, I think that's fine. Let's do that. Um, all right, so I'm going to stay with Epcot for my next one, uh, Horizons, uh, which is no longer there, but was a universally beloved attraction in Epcot about the history of the future. The two things that I remember most about this: uh, one, it was one of the first choose your own ending attractions i'd ever seen remember you get to push a button to do uh air sea or desert i believe was the third one mm-hmm. and things yeah. and then the, uh, the other thing i remember from it was that orange smell that you got as you went through the orange grove scene in it yeah and i have an i have an excellent story about this have i told you this story have you heard it go on 
So I'm in a Waffle House in Kissimmee one night, and it's like midnight. You guys are familiar with a Waffle House? It's an yeah. American diner. Okay. So we're in a Waffle House. It's like midnight, one o'clock. Um, it's the one right across from Crossroads Shopping Center. And I get a text on my phone from a number that I don't recognize. And it said, are you Len Testa? And so I answered it and I said, yes, yes, I am. And I said, and the next text was, are, are you in a Waffle House by Walt Disney World? And then it started to get a little creepy. But again, we're in a Waffle House. So you sort of suspend disbelief while you're in a Waffle House anyway, right? So I answered yes. And they said, come outside. I have something for you. That was the third text. So I went outside because I figured, well, if I'm going to die you know, in a Waffle House, that's, that's the way it's going to happen. So a car pulls up with blacked out windows. Uh, and uh, <laughs> they, the window rolls down on the driver's side. And uh, it's this person I don't recognize. And he holds out his hand. He's got, he said, I have something for you. And I'm like, well, I, I don't recall ordering crack in the parking lot, but <laughs> let's see what happened. Um, so he hands it to me, and it's, an, it's a vial with orange liquid in it. And he said, do you know what it is? And I said, it took me two seconds, and I said, I know exactly what this is. Where did you get it? Um, and what it was was a sample of the actual orange, orange scent that they used on Horizons. And, I got, and the, the guy that gave it to me was a cast member who was there the last day and managed to get a sample of it out. And he said he, uh, he uh, occasionally gives it to friends who he thinks he would, would appreciate having a souvenir like that. So I got oh, one. Wow. Yeah. That's sure. so cool. Yeah, it was fantastic. So I, uh, it was, and I, creepy, I, but cool. Moderately strange, but I, I think uh, you know, in, in the overall realm of strange things that have happened to me related <laughs> to theme parks, not even in the top ten. All right. So Horizons. Horizons is on my list. Have you done that one, Jane? Yes. Yeah, I did Horizons back in the day. And the, I always, you, always enjoyed it. Really enjoyed you, it, actually. If you haven't seen it, um, Martin of Martin's uh, videos uh, has an excellent two-hour uh, summary of the history of the attraction on YouTube. Wow. I'll look at that because it's one that I've never ridden. I, I didn't go to Walt Disney World until 2010 for my first trip. So uh, a lot of the old classics that people sort of you know discuss and things is the things i've never appreciated so i'll look that one up and i will pop it into our uh, show notes for other people like me who've never experienced it that's fantastic uh, i think everyone will appreciate it um uh, my next one and this was a little bit controversial uh i could have gone either way on it uh space mountain in walt disney world and my my second choice was space mountain in disneyland paris i went with walt disney world because two tracks so you've got two choices I'm going to argue this point with you because <laughs> I think the Disneyland one is better because I hate the Walt Disney World ride vehicle where you literally need a crane to get you out of those seats. They are horrible. Okay, what about Disneyland Paris though? It's 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 made for a a, a specific petite version of French person that doesn't uh, doesn't really fit American bodies very well. Oh, I I know my poor friend had to be literally poured into the ride vehicle and then he had to have a cast member jump up and down literally onto the shoulder restraint <laughs> to try and get it to click in so that the vehicle would, would depart. Jane's never ridden this and she doesn't do these sorts of things. But no. um, no. I do love the Disneyland version and it's a highlight of my Disney theme park going life to have gone on space mountain in disneyland being at the top and the lights come on and the, vi the ride completely breaks down christmas day can you believe it thank you god for my christmas present i love you Margaret <laughs> Freeman. and literally the cast members said did we want to be pushed down or did we want to get off and walk it's like no i want to be pushed down <laughs> oh i no it's on our youtube of a ride on disneyland's Space Mountain with the lights on and it was epic and then they let us go on it again and I was praying for it to break down again it didn't <laughs> wow I don't, I don't know if I would have I think I might have wanted to walk down oh no it was such good fun because he just gave us a little he literally with his, his, his finger he just pushed the vehicle and we went oh it was great we didn't know whether the oh, brakes wow. would work, but, you know, we might have died on Space Mountain <laughs> That's right. but it would have been a great story <laughs> <laughs> you should have turned around and asked him that question as you were departing. Like, hey, the brakes work on this thing, right? <laughs> yeah, what's my insurance like? Um, 
But yeah, I will argue that point that I do think Disneyland is the best than Walt Disney World. Paris is nice, but I love the launch, that really powerful launch, but it's right. really, really intense and you do get flung a little bit around in that head support and I always end up banging my ears. It is jarring. That's the 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 one of the things that I didn't like about it, mm-hmm. um, other than the uh, the size constraints on it. It is sort of harsh as a ride. Mm. But Space Mountain's a really good thrill ride and another ride that Jane will never ride. I have for Space Mountain. Not at Disneyland Paris, you haven't. Oh, not at Disneyland oh, Paris, no, I haven't, yeah. no. I have for Walt Disney World, so I would agree with Len because it's the only one that I can actually comment on. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah. All right, my, uh, my seventh attraction uh, is a, a new one, Rise of the Resistance, Disney's mm-hmm. Hollywood Studios. I think this is the best ride Disney's done in like 30 years. Have you, have you had a chance to be on it yet? No. no. I'm not supposed to be going on it. Um, uh, when am I supposed to be going? I've got California for uh, August, which ain't going to happen, let's be honest. And if not, I've got Walt Disney World for Christmas. That, that's that's doable. Definitely Christmas. Hmm. Maybe August, August? August might be. We'll see, depending on, um, depending on whether there are travel restrictions coming into the United States. But I think so. The the reason why I picked Rise of the Resistance and, and why I say it's one of the best rides that Disney's done in in thirty years is it combines virtually everything Disney does really well, and it's one of the best examples of those things. There are four different segments of the ride. Each of them is roughly akin to the Haunted Mansion stretching room mm-hmm. scene, where there's a there's a, a a neat effect that you probably haven't seen before. Um, that also advances the story. So as you go from room to room prior to the ride, uh, you get those neat effects. I think the ride experience itself is fantastic, especially when uh, you're going into the room with the at-ats. The way that they've achieved that look of scale is very impressive. And I think the the soundtrack with John Williams is very good. And the, the overall ride experience is, is it's a thrill ride, but it's a thrill ride that most people in the family can experience so uh, uh, even even young children should appreciate it. And I will say this: um, it's right now the uh, the highest rated attraction in any Disney or Universal theme park in the United States. Wow! Oh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Then I know you've mm-hmm. been on the show before, and you did a really good review for us. And I'll link that in with the show notes because you did. I put it out as a spoiler show and a non-spoiler show. So um, yeah, brilliant. Uh, so my ninth ride is Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. And my number two was Disneyland Paris. And, and I'll tell you why I picked Disneyland. So I think Disneyland is the original version. Um, I like the setting. I think the, uh, the queue itself is a little bit more elaborate uh, than, uh, than any other park. And it has all of the classic effects. Like everything else, every other version of Haunted Mansion is based on the one in Disneyland. The reason why I didn't pick Disneyland Paris is the in Disneyland Paris, the transition to the underground scene mm-hmm. is, a, is a little jarring to me. It's very interesting, and it's a different story that's good. But for me, it, it might be a, one step too far in the story. Like I don't know that you actually necessarily needed that. It's good. It wasn't what I was expecting in terms of Haunted Mansion. And that could be just because I've seen other versions of Haunted Mansion first. There's room for debate here. I like the queue at Paris because you're going round the gardens and right. it's going uphill to the house on the hill. I forgot about the queue. Oh, Yeah, there's that little pagoda with the tea set all set up mm. and, you know, little mm. things like that. And I love that. I love the fact that it has got Vincent's Price little giggle in it. And it's got some unusual <laughs> touches to it and the whole story that themes it in to that part of the park as well, which I think is really immersive if you know the whole story. I don't know. What do you think, Jay? Uh, I must admit, I do. I mean, I like any version, to be fair, I want to mention, but I do like the um, the DLP version. I, I love the positioning of it. And, I mean, you can get mm-hmm. some great photos, to be fair, from stood at the, if you as you're waiting to go in, we've got some, fantastic photos looking out towards Big Thunder. And I also like the the little graveyard after 
the ride when you come out because not everybody knows it's there so you know when you come out turn left and go back up the hill a little bit and I love how that set out and we spent ages uh, when we were there in the summer just wandering around and taking photos I know when we you and I were there together Sheld it was a nice little moment because it people don't realize it's there so it's kind of undiscovered almost mm-hmm. which kind of adds to the whole haunted mansion graveyard the fact that people don't realize it's there so I kind of like that touch on it as well True, good point to that, Jane. Would you have your haunted mansion with the Christmas layover haunted mansion Halloweeny style, or would you just have it pure haunted mansion twenty four seven? I would have it just this straight haunted mansion. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm-hmm. It, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of musicals in general. So it's not my. Uh, it's not my thing. That's uh, that's it. Plus, I think uh, if it, if the ride is good enough, you don't need uh, things like that. I could be wrong. Again, this is my 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 personal opinion on these things. It's your theme park, and you can create it how you I, like. And if you wanted to have twelve different musicals, you were more than entitled to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of musicals, all right. So my uh, my last choice. Uh, this one was tough, but I wanted to go with a nighttime spectacular. Mm-hmm. And my my three choices because you could do you could do parades or firework shows, right? They both they both sort of count. So I, um, I sort of had a sentimental attachment to Spectro Magic because it was the first parade that my daughter and I watched together, which which is great. I mean, I, I have a memory of sitting in Frontierland at 11 p.m. Uh, you know, with my daughter, you know, eating snacks and, and watching the parade go by, that was was just fantastic. I actually didn't like Spectra Magic. I was indifferent to it that much, uh, indifferent to it until that moment. And when I saw how much she really liked it, I started playing it for her um, when we were around the house after we got back, and I really got to you know, uh, got to appreciate the soundtrack. Um, but I didn't pick that. Um, my other choice was Illuminations, which is my personal favorite all time. Nighttime Spectacular ran for 20 years in different incarnations. I would just like to point out, by the way, that the world has gone to hell since Disney stopped running Illuminations. <laughs> not, not saying that's not a coincidence, and I'm going to leave it at that. I think the soundtrack is fantastic. Uh, it showed that Disney didn't need characters in Epcot to have a nighttime extravaganza. Uh, I, and I was actually a little disappointed that Epcot Forever didn't include 10 seconds of, of the Illumination soundtrack because it is uh, an integral part of Epcot's history. Um, but I ended up going with Wishes for my Nighttime Spectacular. Um, I think the, the soundtrack is fantastic. It, the effects were very, very good. Uh, it sort of sums up the spirit of Disney theme parks. And, uh, and it was you know, beloved by almost everyone. It ran, what, 10 years, 12 years? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with Wishes. And I, I think I, I said this on, on the show before, but the first time I saw Wishes, Julie Andrews narrated it live, <laughs> so, so that's my my first version, my first memory of of wishes was was that. And it, kind of hard to beat that. Yeah, everything's going to pale in comparison after that, isn't it? <laughs> right. Like, oh, I like this show, but yeah, you know, it's sh- Julie's not going to be here every night. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I guess I guess we can all watch it still, but whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> so that was that. So that's how, that's how I would end the uh, uh, that's my tenth attraction on the on the list. Got a pretty amazing list here of quite a lot of thrill based rides to be quite frank because you know you've got thrills in Splash, Big Thunder, Space Mountain, you know, and you've got a, a classic icon of Spaceship Earth, you've got a nighttime extravaganza. But the one thing we haven't yet touched on is what we're going to eat. Oh, that's right. So is the one eatery that you think right has got to go into Disneyland Len? Oh, Disneyland Len. <laughs> Disneyland, Disneyland Alien. Uh, boy, that's tough. If it was breakfast, I would pick Carnation Cafe in Disneyland, which I think is incredible value and really good food. Mm-hmm. You, can have, you can have more than one. We'll go with Carnation Cafe as something sort of like nice and quick and easy and waffly and oh yummy. And then is this something a bit more upscale? I, I really do like for lunch uh, Sunshine Seasons in the Land Pavilion. You'll have no argument from us. No, right, it's got a little bit of everything. You. It's got pastries. It's got good food. It's got space. 
you know, for, for seating for, for tons of people. But uh, So I think that's good for lunch. What would I pick for dinner in a theme park? Uh, it would. Uh, I can't think of anything in World, sorry, in Magic Kingdom that I would eat at. I can't think of anything in Disneyland in the park that I would eat at. Same thing with Disneyland Paris. Maybe Waltz, but me. I could say Takumite, but that's just so far outside the... What everyone would, would I mean, I don't want to go Japanese for my for my dinner. Mm. It's it's really expensive, but it's also very good. Uh, what would I pick? Oh, this is this is difficult. Well, what's your favorite food? What do you like to eat? Is there a special sort of cuisine or like you see, Jane's a carnivore, so I'd stick her a steakhouse in, and she'd be happy as Larry. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sorted. Yeah, I would. I was I was leaning towards steak because everyone can find something. Something to eat there. I don't think Le Cellier has the uh, has the the quality that it used to. I'm going to go with Brown Derby in Hollywood Studios. Uh, so it's expensive. I don't know that it's necessarily a good value, but you can't quibble with the quality of the food. I think if there's if there's one complaint you could make about Brown Derby, if there are two complaints you could make about about Brown Derby, one would be the price, two would be the service is kind of slow, but the food is really good. The pork chops, I think. Uh, are, are one of the best items on the menu. Can't beat the Cobb salad, and of course for dessert, the grapefruit cake. That would be my dinner choice. Well, I'm quite happy with that show. I've eaten at Brown Derby. I've had the um, Dine with Imagineer package there, and that was mm-hmm. the food Ooh. there was absolutely divine. I would have probably have thought for a good steak, maybe going um, across to the cafe, because for me, the food... The atmosphere, mm. sitting out on the terrace, looking down to people below. If you time it right, you can have a bit of nighttime ambiance as well. That's oh, oh and there's the biscuits. Oh, <laughs> that's a that's a great idea. Seven biscuits for me, but it's Seven it's biscuits. Disneyland Tester, so we can't really quibble with that. Disneyland Alien, yeah. That's fantastic. This is a great show idea, and I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to hear what other people have uh, yeah. for their ideas. We've had some really, really off-the-wall ideas, and, you know, we. it's interesting to see how people have tackled it from different perspectives. Um, I think Jane would probably have ten It's the Small Worlds going in her theme park <laughs> just to annoy her oh, son yeah. because her son hates that attraction. Oh, that's funny. Uh, every... and okay. I'd probably have 10 Tower of Terrors just to annoy Jane because she hates it and never ridden it yet. I, I considered Tower of Terror too, but it was, it would, I mean, it, with 10, it's, it's, hard to, it, it, it's hard to limit things to 10. No, I think oh. that's good. Before we let yeah. you go, Len, because I, I just want to um, sort of touch on this because it's come out in the news as we are recording. There's been some photos floating around on the old Tinterwebs that Shanghai are posting images of socially distancing queues. So do we think I've that, that they are going to be opening up imminently? I think they're farther along in terms of reopening than any of the other parks. I've heard that uh, cast members have been working for at least a week on practicing how to do social distancing. Mm-hmm. So it's not a surprise that those... Um, but those photos are starting to uh, to surface. I would expect them then to be the first of the Disney parks to reopen, and I think all of the other parks around the world will be looking very, very carefully at what they're doing uh, in terms of what works and what doesn't. So uh, I'm I'm excited to see it happen. Like I said, I can't wait to ride Space Mountain and touch my face. So. <laughs> yeah, well, they're closed in late January, so what, if they open in May, February, March, right. April, yeah. So two months, yeah. So they 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 closed about what two months before um, the other parks. So if the other parks closed in March, we might have anywhere from one to two months of uh, um, lag time behind them. We shall all be glued to the internet to see what is happening. So, Mister Tester, thank you ever so much for coming on the show. Would you like to just give yourself a bit of a shout out where people can find you on social media and hit you up for entry price tickets for Disneyland Tester then? <laughs> <laughs> sure. My, uh, my website is touringplans.com. My email is len at touringplans.com. You can also listen to my podcast with Jim Hill. It's called The Disney Dish. 
uh, over at disneydish.bandcamp.com. And I love my Monday mornings because I, it's an oh, extravaganza of, of you and Jim on my way to work with a coffee in the coffee cup holder. And I'm missing it at the moment because all I've got to do is walk down 13 steps. It's not enough time for me to listen. I'm still stuck on two weeks ago because I can only listen to about three minutes a day. Have you considered the shower? That's when I listen to it. So I'll, I'll pop it in as I'm getting ready in the morning. And it's, uh, and my, my, my wife, Laurel will always, will always sort of stick her head around the corner when I'm, you know, getting when I'm leaving the bathroom, she, and she'll say, "Were you listening to yourself talk?" I was like, "Yeah, I was." And it's number one. It's yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a show that I want to hear, right? That's that's the point. I'm not going to do a show I don't want to hear. Uh, and then number two, you know, sort of quality control to make sure that I uh, uh, make sure that the show sounds good. So it always does. It's a delight <laughs> to listen to you. I could just literally have it on all day every day and the, as i say oh, at the moment i'm not able to because i don't go in the car so i might just have to go out for a drive just to catch up on the podcast <laughs> thank you for that so before we all say goodbye to you there's a couple of very special guests who have popped on by the disney dream girls to share something with you where dreams begin well, let's move on now and I have got with us a very special duo of guests. Hello there, Tiffany and Daniel. Hello. Hi. And we have asked you to do a little bit of a project for us, Daniel. Now, many of our listeners will recognise Daniel and Tiffany before from being on the show. And I was having a little ch chat with Tiffany the other day and she said a certain person's going to be having a very special birthday on Monday. Is that true, Daniel? Very much so. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a, a normal birthday, but we thought, well, what can we do to make Daniel's birthday extra special? So I thought we'd do a little bit of a special happy birthday from me and Jane to you. So Jane, are we ready to do some singing? Oh, you didn't tell me about this, Michelle. It's only happy birthday. It's not let it go or anything, <laughs> love. Come on. So after three, one, two, three. Mickey, someone's having a birthday. Oh, boy. Hit it, Minnie. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And many more. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Have fun, pal. Yay. Now, this is where, Daniel, you imagine you're blowing out the candles on an imaginary chocolate fudge cake. You got the chocolate, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You are very welcome. And I hope tomorrow, your official birthday on Monday, as this is going to be released on Sunday, is going to be a very special day. And I'm sure your mum will make it as, as special as she possibly can at these trying times. Yes. Okay, we're trying. Mom will definitely try. And Abigail's the baker, so we have a few things today. Oh, well, I hope you have a lovely day. And I'm sure Abigail will spoil you something rotten with an amazing concoction. You'll have to send me a picture. We will. Yes. Right. So we just thought we'd have a little chat with you. And to see from your perspective, Daniel, what would you like to do once you are available to get back into the theme parks and everything is back to normal and safe? So forget about this. There's going to be no social distancing. There's going to be nothing. And this is as if Daniel rules the theme park and can go hop from park to park. He can go on any ride without having to make a queue. And he can obviously have a snack whenever he likes. So really, Daniel, I'm, I'm, we're going to pass over to you to see what you're going to come up with. My number five pick was the Coral Reef, or as I like to call it, the Nemo Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good choice because you get to eat seafood while you see seafood. It kind of feels a little bit wrong, but... <laughs> <laughs> I will share something with you, Daniel. It's one of my dreams to one day actually go into that tank and swim. So I know I have to get scuba certified. Is that something you'd like to do? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Surprising to me. <laughs> also, I really like their shrimp. So you've already got a meal plan already designed, what you would like to eat once you can go back into the coral reef. 
Sort of. <laughs> okay, well, that's going to be a really nice place to go and have lunch or dinner. Anywhere else, what's your number four pick? Hollywood Studios. Ooh. I'd really like to go to Rock and Roller Coaster. <laughs> well, since it's your birthday, would you like to ride it five times in a row? I get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys have done it two or three times in a row. The first time I did it, I did it three times in a row yeah. with my father and sister. Oh, wow. How many times have you been on that attraction, Jane? Just remind us all. Me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, that would be um, zero. <laughs> like you need reminding. For Daniel's birthday, would you ride it with him? Of course I would. Ah. Oh. Let's hope he includes Tower of Terror on his birthday list and we'll get her on, we'll get her on it. Oh, after this, I'm going on anything and everything now. <laughs> now, number three is a little bit of a sweet. Ooh. Mickey Ice Cream. And is there a favourite place to eat that with a, a, a view? Would you be still in Hollywood Studios? Yes. Mickey Ice Creams are, like, the best dessert ever. <laughs> Mickey head on a popsicle with ice cream covered in chocolate. Yes, and it's themed, so it's better. <laughs> and it's yeah. calorie free as well, isn't it, Shell? Right. For my number two, quite a ride, Flight of Passage. Ooh, good choice. I love that ride. And since I have no wait, I don't have to wait two hours to ride it. <laughs> Plus side of that. Is there something you like to do before or afterwards? Because for me, I can't go to Flight of Passage before without nipping into Satouli Canteen and getting a little bit of a treat. Not really. We normally go when... Um... In the mornings. Yes. Right. We usually start out with Flight of Passage. In the mornings, we try to. What is it called when they let the park open? Um... Rope drop. Yes, rope drop. <laughs> we normally try to go then. Now, for my number one pick, something I have not gone to do yet, Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know your mummy's a big Star Wars fan, so I was kind of guessing that would be number one choice for you. Yes, I want to go into Galaxy's Edge. And just visit everything and ride everything and have some character interactions. Would you have blue milk or green milk? Blue. <laughs> Classic. Visit the whole land in two days, see everything. That sounds like a great top five for you to do, Daniel, and I really hope you are able to get into the packs real soon to be able to do that in a safe manner. I know. I have a trip in September I'm waiting on to see if we're going to be able to do that for the agency. Mm -hmm. if we do, we get to try Rise of the Resistance <gasps> out in Disneyland in California, so I'm excited about that i'm hoping that'll happen lucky i know the kids are like, hey, I'm like mm, not sneak me one. into the bag <laughs> <laughs> oh. when do you think as a family realistically you'd be would you be able to go later on in the year if the park was open maybe or next year beginning of next year i can't wait to show them galaxy's edge because they're huge star wars fans too so i know they're gonna love it Miss Michelle, as soon as you get back into the parks, what would you like to do? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I'd like to show my husband around Galaxy's Edge. He's not seen it yet. I'd like to ride Rise of the Resistance because everybody I've spoken to who has ridden it has said it's the most amazing attraction that Disney have ever done. A lot of it, though, for me... It's probably seeing the friends I normally see when I go to a Disney park because... Having friends so far away from you and not being able to keep up with them and see them and, you know, I've got trips planned with friends from all over the world over the next few months and it's it's quite hard thinking that, you know, that's not going to happen and I've no idea of when our trips might collide again in the future. So, yeah, I think friends, friends and Disney go together really, really well. Yes, they do. What yeah. about you, Jane? What would you do? What are you excited to do? Well, I think Star Wars, Rise of Resistance particularly, obviously we've got a, a big Star Wars influence in my family with doing the cosplay and everything. So Star Wars has got to be up there. 
as the as the main must do. But unfortunately for me, with it being 2013, since the last time I was over in Disney World, there's quite a lot of things that I really would like to do because I've never done them. Things like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and all of um, Pandora Animal Kingdom. And I've not seen what Disney Springs looks like. So I've got a long list of must do's. Those are all great choices. They sound exciting. Yes. Be great. <laughs> I'll do a meetup at some point. Maybe we could ride Rise of the Resistance together. Oh, cool. And then, just for Daniel, we'll have a delayed birthday treat of some kind of ice cream somewhere. <laughs> would be good. Yes. It is all great. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, just moving away from the virtual idea of getting back to the theme park how's things for you being tiffany because obviously you work in the travel industry i imagine it's quite a difficult time for you working with your guests to rearrange things it is so our first priority of course is guest safety and it was getting people home safely when things started to close down because we have people all over the world Mm -hmm. to get home and once they were home then it was rearranging um, experiences for guests and, you know, making sure that they were getting what they wanted. I think it's, it is definitely challenging. And every time you have a cancellation that kind of breaks your heart, Mm. you know, it's not just a vacation, it's somebody's dream and something that they've worked for so hard. So I'm looking forward to being able to put those back and to help people plan their dreams when it's safe to do that again. So it can be magical. Yes. Perfect. And if you are planning to have a trip, Tiffany, where can people get in touch with you to be able to take on board some of the services that you offer? Thank you. So you can find me on Facebook at Wishes Family Travel dash Tiffany Morse, M-O-R-S-E. Or you can email me at Tiff. T-I-F-F-M at wishesfamilytravel.com. And I would just like to say that through all of this, having a travel agent is one of the most essential things that people have come back and said to me and Jane about their travel plans because the travel agent does all the worry for you and does all Mm. of the dealing with the cancellation. And in a lot of cases, the travel agents say, do not make any money at all on the services that you are doing if the trip gets cancelled. Am I right with that? You are correct with that. Absolutely. And it doesn't cost you any more to go with a travel agency because in the case of Disney, Disney pay you direct and it's the same price you would get if you went direct to Disney, but you've then got a professional who's going to book your ADRs and your fast passes and can deal with problems such as this. Absolutely. And that's a good thing that sometimes people don't know or don't think of. Well, lovelies, thank you so much for popping by today and having a chat with us. Daniel, I am looking forward to seeing the creation that Abigail makes for your birthday cake. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for chatting with us. And uh, I look forward to having a trip report when you do actually get back to the Disney parks and share with us some of the things that you got to do. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Where dreams begin. Let's end off this week's show. As usual, you can find us anywhere and everywhere under Disney Dream Girls. Twitter and Instagram at Diz Dream Girls. We will be back next week with some more Disney chatter. If you have any comments about the Disney park we have created today, please get in touch with either ourselves or Len. I am sure he would love to find someone doing a GoFundMe to put put this all together for him. <laughs> and until it's, why, it's why I don't play the lot. <laughs> and until next week, it's goodbye from me. Bye from me. Bye from me too. This podcast is part of the After Dark Podcast Network. <laughs>